My name is Kendrick Lamar, and I'll be performing at Super Bowl 59. Will you be pulling up? I hope so. You know there's only one opportunity to win a championship. No round tools. Let's get it. Boom! Action. Kendrick Lamar is performing at the Super Bowl in the Houston, Texas, finna go to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl, <laughs> man. It's all happening. We claiming it now. <laughs> and then everybody in Houston is finna be at the bars. Hey, hey and uh, the Super Bowl's in Louisiana. It's so a whole bunch, we finna go, we, we run down the street. We going down the street. I ain't got no two grand for no Super Bowl ticket, but I'll just be down there drinking, eating beignets, huh? And getting drunk and screaming, they not like us. They, they not, not like us. us. They not like us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, two hundred million people gonna be screaming. They not like us. Did and, you see what Jay Z said? And one hundred and fifty of them are gonna be white. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> hey, can the revolution ever be sponsored by Apple Music? Never. <laughs> I, I love Never. it. All this is happening right in real time. Uh, Jay Z, he's he's supposed to be the person for the Super Bowl. And all I remember is Colin Kaepernick was kneeling. Black people said, we're never watching the NFL ever again. Come on. And now black people are like, they not like us. They not. Y'all love corporate dollars. Can you ever stand on any type of morals? There are no real black revolutionaries. Did you see what Charleston White said about the Sonia Massey? What did he say? Thing. Uh, there's a clip going around where he was like, he's ashamed to be black. He said, because... Whenever they kill us, we're not we're not committing no acts of violence. There's no way that anything's really changing. Like it's so easy to just we just feel things. We'll watch an atrocity and we'll just you know we we care, but they but we're really cowards. And this situation shows us because the whole thing about the they not like us is saying that we don't want a culture vulture coming in taking our culture and misappropriating it. it right? It's Charleston White, an agent of chaos. He seems like an agent provocateur. Like he says all these things. Yeah, like when if you say that we don't get angry when the police do something, you're really telling your community, if they respond in the way that you're asking them to respond, you're not going to like what happens. But if it's to make a point, no real good general, no good leader leads his people to slaughter. That's crazy talk. It may be crazy talk, but I understand his rhetoric. I know what he means and what he's saying he's is... He's a one-eyed willy. He can't fight nobody. He's he going to run that. But what, it, but what he's saying is, what are we really doing about the atrocities against our people? How do we really, what plan, really to be honest, and I'm not saying that it's acts of violence, because let me tell y'all something. The federal government, I don't know if y'all understand this, but we are we have so many weapons, there's no way that you can actually go against this government they're at already, all. They're already controlling us right now. Their best weapon is the media. Yeah. And, and the, their number one agent provocateur right now, his name is Kendrick Lamar, K. Dot. He has been sent to to capture the black people. And as long as y'all are dancing, y'all jigs, y'all are not worried about the big picture. And the big picture is it's not the Super Bowl, it's the election. And so after this election, y'all finna be out there dancing y'all jig while Donald Trump is the president of the United States of America. So did we really forget about the whole kneeling protest? <clears throat> Man, it's gone. I'm telling you. Mr. Morale in the Big Steppers is supposed to be <laughs> the moral compass for the black community, and he is leading us astray. He's leading us right back to the plantation. He told me he went to go get free, and now he signed an interscope, and he's going back to the plantation. How are you going to run away from the slave plantation and come right back? Black people, y'all so easy to be like moved around to. Like, y'all sway y'all opinions so fast because now all of a sudden, and Kendrick Lamar is performing at the Super Bowl. Everybody, yay! Happy. Oh my God! Happy. We didn't won! We won! It's like, y'all funny, man. Like, y'all don't believe, y'all don't believe in anything. They believe in tokenism. That's as, it. As man. long as you pat the black person on the head and you say, you're a good little blackie, everything is fantastic. As soon as they, everybody was angry, angry boycotting the NFL. I still haven't really watched the NFL game since Colin Kaepernick knelt. Like that, right? That's just me, right? If I say that I don't believe in this institution that's exploiting black men, and you say that's not exploitation, they make good money. Sure, 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 sure. It's always a billionaire sitting up in the box talking about run, blacky run. I mean, at the end of the day, too. If you really think about it, it says a lot about our people and how we feel about whatever racism we experience in the country. Because honestly, on when I look at my timeline, I didn't see anybody protesting the NFL. So I, right, everybody kept watching. So once I understand that the me, the media is controlling my brain, social, I want to stop scrolling. I have told myself that I don't want to be programmed no longer. 
I have things that I want to see, right? When right. I go to you, my YouTube feed, I don't want to see what the algorithm is promoting. I want to see what I program to see. Like if I subscribe to the channel, I want to see that channel. Right. I don't want to see some arbitrary thing to show. And that might hurt my business because my business is based on YouTube recommendations. Yes. But they recommend a whole bunch of bull job things that I don't need to see. And so the first way that I control my life, right, is I'm going to write down the channels that I go to. And so I'm not going to scroll. If it's not on my feed, I'm going to type in the channel, go watch the video I want to watch, and get off the joint. I don't want... I was trying to listen to Spotify, and all they kept playing was, they not like us, they not like us, and euphoria. And I, and I specifically told Spotify what I wanted to listen to. I said, Spotify, I want to hear the album, damn. So I want to hear that, that love. That's one of my favorite songs, the love and the lust. Man, he be going hard. I'm like, he got great albums. Look, Kendrick has awesome albums. But for the reason why y'all started supporting Kendrick as of late is not because of his albums. Y'all supporting him because he's a part of a beef, because he's conspiring against somebody to bring their career down. Not only that, didn't Jay-Z tell Travis Scott not to perform at the Super Bowl? Did he? I don't recall. I think he had something. He was he was basically trying to tell him during that time, during that kneeling time. He was like, no, don't perform. Now, all of a sudden, Jay-Z's in charge of the acts that go to the Super Bowl? I just heard that Travis Scott sold like uh, two or 300,000 records. It's a, a crazy number of records for an album that had already been out. And so they like re-released some things that... They put back a compilation tape from Travis Scott and it's banging. The last time I heard about Travis Scott, 100,000 people trampled a few people. Yeah. So you catch a few bodies, go away for a little while and come back and nobody remembers that you caught no bodies. <laughs> That's wild. Man, we have such That's a, a short memory. We do. We do. <laughs> Our attention spans is boo-boo, boy. <laughs> do we have real revolutionaries in the black community? Hell yeah. <laughs> Absolutely positively. Sitting right here next to you, my brother. Oh, facts. We, we've, we've been discussing how that we can have effective, uh, productive conversations for the for shit for years, man. And so now, and since we're both veterans of the United States military, like we want to serve this nation in the most powerful way possible. Right. And so what's the most best way then to have accurate and honest conversations? When you bring up gentlemen like Charleston White, he's an entertainer, he's a provocateur, and he says things to get us going. But we don't need to be emotional or irrational. We need concentrated, I call it social guerrilla warfare. Right. <laughs> See, like it, when they was fighting in Vietnam, they built tunnels and stuff like that because it's hard to fight an army that got big tanks and bombs. You got to be elusive. You got to be fast. And so now through the social audio, uh, social media, we have to be able to pick and choose our spots so we can evade Google, so we can get X up off of us. X ain't trying to get us, but uh, Facebook is. You right. want to fight Meta, you want to fight Google, and they listen to all the conversations. And, and I'm like, why is Spotify telling me what I should be listening to? But see, with Charleston White, Charleston White <clears throat> understands the audience he's talking to. And when you're talking to mainly black people, I think you have to talk in an aggressive way. There's a way you have to deliver the information to get people to totally see what he's talking to. He's talking about people that he's talking to a group of people that practice debauchery, listen to serial killer music all day. How are you going to pierce through these people with just positive articulation? You really got to come through and say, hey, wake your ass up. Wake up. This is what's going on. You have to because you have a sleep group of people and you can see that because they not like us. But we they do, not like us. We have, we have <laughs> several moments that wake us up. I mean, in my lifetime, I, I would say, uh, the, the guy that got beat up, can we all just get along? Rodney King. Yeah. Like, we have these moments, these come-together moments, where, but we don't have no uh, actual place that we're going. We just be running in nowhere. Everybody running in a different direction. And so if you don't have these immigrants, these illegal immigrants just came to America, and they just showed up, and because they came asking for things, they didn't come asking for education, they didn't come asking for, uh, for none of these uh, uh, Medicaid or nothing. They came and said, I need a house. <laughs> is the Venezuelan I thing real? House. I've been hearing that that's kind of like some cat, but is it, are there really Venezuelan Im Im immigrants taking over apartments like in Colorado? I know Chicago said they're going through some situations when immigrants come in there too. A lot of black people are protesting the immigration situation in Chicago. If I could take you to a place, if we call, well, I called it Little Mexico. But when you go over there, man, it was such a it was such a wild place. It was like crack town. I'd be over there, you know what I'm saying, hanging with my, my peoples. But it was all immigrants straight from Guatemala, straight from Nicaragua. And you could they look, they look like dark skin, they look like black with, with different uh, facial features. It's very, 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 very fascinating. Right. But and over there, well, that was shootouts in broad daylight. Hey, who, what, what's, who's gonna stop me? What you gonna do? Send me back. 
That's yeah, true. yeah. I'm just, so like yeah. th- these, Im- it's happening. Man, they, uh, two two immigrants. They just they just us uh, uh threw a little baby girl into the water. Like yeah, yeah, nasty, nasty. They abused her and, and took advantage of her and threw her in the water. So when these things are happening, the fastest way for us to stop talking about that is for them to make a song or get us to focus on uh, Drake and Kendrick Lamar. I'm I'm almost wondering though, out of all the conspiracy theories I have. Are they conspiring? Are the labels conspiring to take our attention away? Because this beef has taken our attention away in totality from everything. I mean, we've never seen a beef happen in real time in this way. And it does make you wonder. I mean, just look at how it has all the line. And you may bring up a great point. It's election year. This is election year. The Democratic Party totally took the they not like us theme. Now we got ahead of time. We know. Kendrick going to be at the Super Bowl. We're going to be talking about that the whole time. And this is like, that's after the election. So whatever the result is, y'all going to be told in watching Kendrick. Every city has city planners. Right. They plan the city out for 30, 40, 50 years in advance. The government does the exact same thing. Man, ain't none of this stuff by chance. They could see it coming. Right. 90% of everything that you see is, is curated, right? It's propaganda. Someone's trying to control you. So when you while you're watching your YouTube or while you're on your Facebook feed, they're showing this to you for a reason. They want you to be in your feelings. They want you to have this ideology. But I'm asking you, hey, what's the black ideology? <sighs> and if the black ideology isn't ownership, then I don't even know what we're talking about. Man, I was listening to the reparations bill because in California, not only are they trying to give immigrants $150,000 for homes, but they told black folks, no, you're not getting reparations. And so they started to act a fool. But they started to uncover the things that they were asking for in reparations. This is something called the Crown Act. The little black kids that go to school should be able to wear their natural hair. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. That's the type of reparations you want? And I'm like, these are affluent black people who are focused on aesthetics and not actually focused on surviving. Nigga, I'm surviving. I live, man, this is the ghetto. And I'm and I love black folks. And I think black folks deserve something better than roaches and rats. How about that? Yes. I mean, first off, I think it's ridiculous that we have to even argue about our hairstyles in the first place. I think that that is crazy that we even have to defend the right to wear dreads or whatever. But however, comma, going back to what you just said about ideology, we what? don't know. We don't know what our ideology is. From, we don't have a plan. From man to man. Go ahead. Why are my dreads so important? Who does that connect me to? Y'all playing. Y'all really playing. This is my African heritage. <laughs> they did the exact same thing to their own people. White folks during the hippie time, they said, y'all hippies, cut that long ass hair. Be presentable. Let's get to work. There has to be order somewhere. What I'm saying is, I don't even, it's, it's not even enough for us to even waste our time talking about it here because of what you just said. It's like at the end of the day, it's so minute that we like, like Wait, we, we just push back. Because ahead, it's so big. You came down MLK, okay? Right. Bro, the, the beauty shop is bigger than Walmart, and there's five of them. Right. Obviously, hair is a real big deal. It is. And, to for, us. and for what reason? To, exactly. Why is your hair such a big ass deal? Exactly. Why is wearing a European wig connect you to your blackness? Are your, huh? la- are your lashes? Jesus, man, this doesn't make any sense. Are your lashes? And, Them like lashes be like Snuffleupagus. And for you, black man, hey, hey, be honest. There are some cultures that had braids, right? Like uh, Vikings. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> but how is that connected to your masculinity? That's crazy. A man saying that my aesthetic connects me to my masculinity. Okay, bro. <laughs> Do some push-ups. Let's get strong. What, what, what did uh, what did Drake tell uh, Kenny Lamar? Drop and give me 50. Drop and give me 50. Bro, Drop every- and give me 50. <laughs> Hey, black man, if you scrolling on YouTube right now, Top stop, wanna piece it up. <laughs> stop scrolling, get on the floor and give me 50, huh? Get your chest right. Man, RBG's like a revolutionary but gangster. I like those guys. I don't remember what their names was, but their music was about curating the revolution. And when you have this pseudo revolutionary named K Dot, Kung Fu Kenny, how, how much Kung Fu Kenny? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pick on you because you've probably been bullied your entire life. And so that's what makes him so angry with Drake, because Drake is six foot tall and he gets women. And K Dot's like, man, stop fucking all my sisters. Yeah, I mean, he, but I think I think I think they say what Kendrick like five five, something like that. Hey, short man complex is a real thing. Yeah, if you spend your whole life looking up, boy, you can't wait to look down on somebody. He's trying to look down on Drake when they 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 they're opposite sides of the exact same coin. 
Hey man, if Kendrick don't go on that tour with Drake, where does where does uh Kendrick where is he? Drake invited him out. He put him on. Like he said, I tried to do the right thing by putting, you know, I thought putting these guys on was a good thing. At the end of the day, let's back this up. Let's go back to something. What's up? I am not pleased with this announcement. What announcement? I'm gonna be totally this NFL thing. Let me say how I feel about the NFL. You know, Kaepernick is more capable of being a quarterback than probably over half of the guys that's on the roster right now right now he was not able to secure a spot why because he took a stance to get something that he felt was wrong and these teams did not want these guys to kneel in fact i know that even the armed forces aren't they paying to be out there i think the armed forces pay to be out there it's not like that these it, nfl it's teams no thing like uh, American sports is nothing but an ad campaign for the United States military. Yeah, so it's it's not like it's it has nothing to do with patriotism. I think that speaks volumes in what these men really feel when this man says, hey, I don't like what's happening with this community. And being that most of the NFL is black, you know, we want to say, hey, we're against this. And for them to say no, and you're not going to get a team, still has to this day has kept them off a team. How do we as the black community not withdraw from that and say, no, we don't want to support that. I heard this astonishing number. And I think they said 70% of American men could not qualify for the armed forces right now because of illegal narcotics, you know, smoking weed or just being obese. They don't even, or they can't pass the ASVAB. Like 70% of men can't qualify. And so when you see that the military is advertising at the games, when you see that the military is uh, advertising the NFL, you know that they're trying to, they're trying to recruit. Something's happening in America. Something's happening around the world. And we have to be able to stand back and fight. And the only way we do that, I mean, I guess it's through media. <laughs> it's not even, I guess. It has to happen through media. But what's the what's the accurate uh, media that we're supposed to be consuming? I don't know. I don't know. The I don't greatest know. American law. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Tap in, tune in. Hey, man. Definitely. Hey, first, have the conversation of freedom. First off, let me let me let me say this: we definitely are having the conversation that everyone needs to be having in our community. I mean, all Americans, but we definitely are having the conversation that Black Americans need to have because we're asking the right questions. Outside of this is what I mean. Where are you getting it? We have some people that we think of, but even like when we talk about the Cornell West, when we talk about the uh, Michael Eric Dysons, they're still caught up in the matrix of the game of just talking a bunch of nonsense. Like we have not collectively come together as black people to say, hey, this is where the focus needs to be. And this is how we need to be acting and carrying ourselves. We we can't even agree on that. When you say Dr. Cornell West, we can't play pretend. We got to hold these people accountable <laughs> for exactly dancing. who they are. <laughs> If you spend the majority of your life in predominantly white institutions, how can I possibly take you serious? How can I look at you and say, man, you're for me? I can't. You just spent your entire life in an ivory tower and now you finna come to black America and tell me, uh, uh, Negro spirituals, we, we, we gotta listen to the sisters. Man, hey, stop it. <laughs> I'm not listening to that nonsense. Working class men, poor men. I'm not even working class. They said working class, right? Middle class America is over $150,000 right now. If you make less than $150,000, you're working poor. I was looking at uh, Dave Ramsey. You know what that is? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so. The I'm, financial guy? Yeah, I, I look at him. I get that in my spirit because I'm on a financial journey. And I'm listening to a lot of white callers call in. When these white families are calling in, they're talking about their annual income. A lot of them are saying what you said, 150, 180. All the while, black America, guess what y'all talk? This was the income of the family, of the household. Or, you know, sometimes a man Hit that would, number. Hit that number. So, sometimes a man would call, call, call in, but it was like 180. Black America, the women in your community want one person to do this. Now, these are families calling in, getting they self online to go be a millionaire in 10 years because guess what? It takes time to get there with financial your strategy and literacy. Y'all arguing about 50-50, one person making this income, and what you not going to do in your household. When the average person in America makes like $37,000 a year. Come on, dog. Like, it, it, it's you're so detached from reality that we can't even... I think it's because it's probably depressing. When you start listening to white people and their finances, they live in a two, three hundred thousand dollar home. They drive probably a fifty, sixty thousand dollar vehicle, but they're wearing some shoes they got from Walmart because they're like, "Hey, I still got to save for the kids' college fund. I still got to have retirement." They're allocating their money so they could be sustainable and survive in America. And black folks is buying weave. So that's what I'm saying. Are we even effectively? 
and logically looking at other communities and how we're comparing to them. Not not to be like them. They not like us. They not like us. Well, why it's can't like, we just take an inventory of our real lives? You can't afford to feed yourself. We have to do that. But you got to see what's in real. Like you said, we're detached from reality. Real, real families that are getting along and getting somewhere and trying to go somewhere. Look at what they're accumulating. Look at what they're making. And you don't see them. I, I, I'm not saying white people don't go to brunch, but we've made brunch the most famous thing in America. We've made consumerism the most famous. We, all we do is you, buy, you buy, buy. We. You're saying things that black women are doing. Black Ooh. women are going to brunch, bro. Uh, black women are driving the community. When I'm trying to have a are. conversation with a, with a man, a black man, he's always going to reference what a black woman said. That's true. And I'm like, I don't, I can't, I don't, I don't, I can't understand that reference point. I'll be talking to poor men, and I, I'm a poor man. I can't even play pretend, bro. The rent right here where I stay is like twelve hundred dollars a month. All right, I'm I sell plasma just so I can eat cup noodles. Okay, I'm trying to figure it out. I can't play pretend. I can't try to buy shoes and rims so that I look like I got something. No, 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 no. I have to be able to sustain myself. If I can't take care of myself, how can I take care of a family? Every yeah. black man in America, you put True. me on child support. How can I take care of a family True. when I can't take care of myself? But everyone, you're offended to say that because it makes you look however. Now it makes you look strong. Now, if other men say, I can't afford to take care of myself, then we're going to have to collectively come up with an idea, the 10 million man march. Yes. How can we push back so we can take care of ourselves? Now, if, if Kendrick Lamar really understood the people, if he really understood where he lives at and he goes out in this community and sees all these black men who have talent, human resources, they're not being utilized to, the, to their uh, God-given potential. You need to address that. That's why I want to tap into you. Hey, I know you got a bunch of energy. I know you got a lot to say. And Kendrick Lamar is not finna come save you. You got to save you, man. We only listen to entertainers and women. Entertainers and women. And I That's think it. entertainers are women adjacent. Yes. Just like social media is women adjacent. Yes. The only thing that men have is the physical world because men have a monopoly on force. When it comes to emotions and all these feelings and, and consumerism, women dominate that. But when it comes to being effective, boy, men have, men have, there ain't nothing like a strong man who's willing to get busy. You're transparent. I'm transparent. It's nothing wrong with getting a blue collar job. Drive for Uber, drive for Lyft, work with the post office. That's what I do. That's how I provide for my family. Yes, you're going to work overtime. Yes, it's some 60 hour week, work weeks. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's wild. I also, in my spare time, I'm looking at how to maximize the income I have because guess what? We're getting older. You don't have forever. Black man, you got a plan. You got to work hard. You got a plan. You got, hey, it's nothing wrong with just surviving. Sometimes you got to survive. And the moment of just surviving is when you learn to maximize opportunities and potential. And right now, <laughs> nothing wrong with surviving. You got to survive out here. You can't give up. <laughs> what option do you have, my brother? Some survive people, or die. Some people give up. And this is the thing. You are living in a Sometimes general, I want to give up. That's all we all do. And look, also give yourself Nigga, time. I wake up in the morning and I shed four tears for my four children that I can't touch right now. That's my reality. Like, I can't tell you what to do because it's hard. Mm -hmm. All I can do is wake up and show up and try to get like 1% better every day, nigga. Sometimes yep. I'll be stagnant. I'm like, man, how am I supposed to? I don't know, god dang it. Fix it. I have to. Yeah, you have to. The hell? That's the conversation right now. It's yes. not if men come together. It's not if men stand up. If poor men don't stand up for themselves, then there is no more poor men. Right. You become a slave. Exactly. A modern day serf. And this is what's happening. And that's what offends me so much about the Drake and the Kendrick Lamar thing. This is happening. And instead of us actually fighting to establish ourselves financially, we're saying they're not like us. Hell no, nigga. They ain't broke. <laughs> God, a word. They're, they're, they're not shooting. That's a clip. They're not shooting each other. <laughs> they're working together to be effective. And I just want to work with men so we can be effective. And, and it's going to be, a, man, in prison, in football, in the military, men fight. And sometimes you get hit and it hurts. But you, that's surviving. It's like learning how to, to go through the tough stuff to get to the place you want to be at. And it's more better than this. It's more better than the government having control of your life. It's more better than Spotify telling me what songs I can listen to. It's more better than YouTube telling me what videos I can watch. I'm, I want to program myself. That's why we're doing this right here. So I can program myself and so y'all can see what my 50 is 
And so y'all could do them 52. Man, put out 50 pieces of content telling your actual story. Media is the new revolution. And you're the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive, baby. <laughs> Shit, fucking whole ass nigga. Keep playing with me. I'll punch in your eye, bitch. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.